Thank you for joining us on this webinar in which we'll talk about using MATLAB to develop and deploy financial applications. Right. My name is Sadat Sundar and I'm an application engineer with the MathWorks where I primarily focus on the finance product. My goal at the end of this webinar today is to show you how MATLAB can help you save time and make you more productive, whether you're doing some quick prototyping or even building out a full-fledged financial application. Right. To give you a hint of what an end product in terms of a financial application might look like, I'm going to tab over to this web interface we have here for portfolio management. So the end users in this case, portfolio managers, right, can cut out the noise and use a clutter-free business level tool like this where all their complex portfolio optimization functionality has already been built under the hood using MATLAB functionality. So all they would need to do is set a couple of constraints where it applies, scroll down and click on optimize allocation, which is basically going to make a call to MATLAB and it's going to use MATLAB's portfolio optimization libraries under the hood to calculate optimized portfolios and generate an efficient frontier. Right? It'll also give you some other metrics like the Sharpe ratio to help pick between these different asset allocations. So this can be very interactive where you can have calls going back and forth between the web page and MATLAB. So we're allowed to pick out a portfolio of interest right here. And MATLAB gives us the corresponding asset allocation if you just scroll down. And it also gives us some metrics that we can use to evaluate the portfolio that we just selected. Now, as a portfolio manager, I'm going to want to validate my strategy. And again, MATLAB does some back testing under the hood and throws up a couple of charts, right? So this combined with the Monte Carlo simulation that you see to the right, which projects future returns, helps the portfolio manager make quick decisions as to whether a particular asset allocation strategy even makes sense. Right? What I want you to notice, however, in this case, is the power of MATLAB's analytics brought to the fore via a web interface. We'll talk more about uh, both the analytics and the process of packaging it as an application later in this webinar as well. But for now, I'm just going to tab over to back to the slides again, where we'll take a look at the agenda. To start off with, we'll touch on some of the high-level challenges that our customers face in the industry and relate that to the tools that are being used to do the analysis. In the next section here, we'll use a simple financial task to go over an introduction of MATLAB. It'll be a quick overview, right? And even here, you'll see that the challenges that we discussed initially they'll serve as a constant undercurrent during this example. And we'll talk about how these challenges can be addressed. After the introduction, we can take a quick look at a couple of fully baked examples. Here we'll see how MATLAB can be used to build solutions spanning many different applications within the finance industry in itself. Then we'll move on to discussing how we can share these analytics and models that we create in MATLAB whether that's sharing it as reports, creating what-if analysis tools, or integrating it into enterprise solutions. We'll then spend the last few minutes tying up loose ends and just summarizing before we open the floor up to questions. So we've been working with the finance industry for almost 20 years now. And over the course of that time, we've picked up on some key challenges that most people doing financial analysis seem to face. Firstly, you've got markets that are changing really quickly. And in order to stay competitive and ahead of the curve, one needs to be able to adapt and really quickly at that. Right? Secondly, you've got big data becoming more and more of a buzz phrase recently. But the finance industry has always had to handle and manage huge amounts of data. Think about the data it takes to set up a back test or a Monte Carlo simulation, for example. So with this larger data comes more complex models. And then the lack of computing power in this case can end up being a bigger roadblock than one would expect. Finally, there's a bigger emphasis on moving away from this concept of black box modeling, especially when it comes to mission critical modeling like risk calculations or pricing, right? That transparency could come either in the form of rigorous reporting or just being able to understand and expose the math and logic behind these models. Right, whether that's to external regulators or even internal colleagues. So we see here that these challenges, they seem to affect the business as a whole and not just that quant or financial engineer. These broad challenges, they often tend to stem from the tools that are being used to do the analysis. 
So you could have off-the-shelf solutions that work in the short term and give you the results that you need right now. But as soon as it needs some tweaking, some customization, these solutions can often fail pretty spectacularly. These applications along with the consultant built applications can also be black box in the sense that there can be a complete lack of transparency regarding the implementation under the hood. So in a lot of cases, this eventually leads to these solutions becoming shelfware. Right? Coming to Excel, I'm sure all of us have used Excel at some point. And Excel is really good at taking a look at data up front. But once there's a large amount of data or more complex simulations to run, with Excel, you tend to hit a brick wall pretty quickly. And I'm sure some of you have faced that issue already. Of course, you could use one of the traditional programming languages like C or Java, but then you'd be spending a lot of time just building up your application from the scratch and then spending more time just maintaining it. Right, so basically you'll be doing more of a software engineering job than that of a quant. Finally, you could use a combination of the tools that we talked about, but in that case, there's a huge amount of time spent in just trying to figure out things like getting data from one tool to another. So you could end up doing something as rudimentary as copying and pasting data from one application to another instead of automating the whole process, and that's not ideal in any sense. One of the primary reasons that MATLAB has become a premier tool in the industry is because it addresses these challenges. Some of the top investment banks, hedge funds, insurance companies use MATLAB for their analysis. So you see these screenshots on the right? They're from real customized applications built out by some of our customers in the industry. Before we move on to the example, I'm going to set the stage with this commonly used workflow in financial analysis while building applications using MATLAB or any other software for that matter. In the first phase, we'll need to bring our data from wherever it resides into MATLAB. We can have the data coming in from a variety of different sources, whether that's Excel spreadsheets, some people use in-house databases, others have subscriptions to data feeds like Bloomberg or FactSet. Right. So MATLAB provides easy interfaces to quickly bring your data in so that most of the time can be spent in this middle stage right here, which is the analysis phase. And that's exactly what you want as a financial analyst, right? You get to spend a big chunk of your time here where you can leverage some of the low-cost plotting capabilities to gain some insight into the data and then use that insight to build financial models using some of the inbuilt libraries in MATLAB. But we all know our job as an analyst doesn't end there. It's important to be able to share this analysis with colleagues or a manager or even external clients. So MATLAB makes it easy for you to do that, whether you choose to go the route of static reports or create a what-if analysis tool that can widely be used, just like that asset allocation tool we saw earlier. So MATLAB helps you streamline this workflow that you see here while also helping you automate the entire process. We'll see that as well during my example here. So I'm going to jump into MATLAB right now. This right here is the basic MATLAB desktop. Don't worry too much about what all these different windows do. Instead, I'll talk about them as and when we use them over the course of this example. But for now, I'd like you to focus on this window called the current folder. So the current folder you can think of as sort of a Windows Explorer view inside of MATLAB, so you can always navigate to any folder in your Windows file system. In this case, I have a file called index data, which contains some data which I'm going to use as a starting point. Right, let's quickly open it up and take a look at it outside of MATLAB first. So the data that we have here is a bunch of daily closing prices for these large cap stock indices from a number of different countries. We have about 10 years worth of historical data. So we'll put ourselves in the shoes of a portfolio manager or an investor for the sake of this example and try to come up with an optimal portfolio given this universe of assets. Before we even start working on the data inside of MATLAB, we first need to think about how we're going to bring it in from Excel into MATLAB, right? So for that, we're going to go back into MATLAB and use one of the high-level interfaces that I was talking about earlier to do this access for us. So in this case, we're going to use the import tool where we'll select the file that we want to import from. You'll notice that this tool has already done some of our work for us. For example, it separated out the prices from the tickers or the column headers. 
it's recognized that this first column contains dates and so on. Right? So now all we need to do is pick out a subset of the data that you want to bring in. In this case, I'm just going to bring in all the data. Pick a container that, we're, that we want to hold the data in, in MATLAB. Right? I usually pick table, especially when we're working with spreadsheet data, because it can hold dates, price information or return information, which is numeric data, as well as things like tickers or string information, and squash it together into one container, making it easy to use in MATLAB. And here you have some filters to handle missing and dirty data. In this case, let's say I'm happy with how my data looks. Without spending too much time in this tool, we can get right down to business by just clicking on this import selection button, which is going to go ahead and import all our data into MATLAB. And you notice we didn't spend more than 30 seconds in that particular tool. right? So it's already saved us some time. Now we see this index data container in what's called our workspace. So the workspace you can think of as sort of the memory inside of MATLAB. So anything that you have in your workspace, you can look at, operate on, and work with, and do your analysis on. In this case, you notice that the data is abstracted away from us. But if ever we need to verify the data or take a look at it, it's always available at our fingertips by double clicking on it. And you can just dig in. There's no limit on how much data you can look at. And you can use this as one verification tool just to make sure the data looks right. But me personally, whether it's for verification, looking for anomalies, or just understanding patterns in the data, what I do is I typically pick out a couple of these columns. And then I go up to this plots tab up here, which is going to make a suggestion of a chart given the data that I've selected. In this case, you notice it just gives me the option of a normal time series chart. These charts, they're very interactive and low cost. So you can always understand patterns or get more insight into your data before building financial models by zooming and panning, just exploring your chart. Another reason that I personally use these charts for is just to make sure that my results or the results of a certain operation that I perform on data looks right, because I don't want to go too far down the wrong path before correcting myself. Let's say I'm happy with how this chart looks. Now I'm going to start looking at my data itself. I have a universe of assets here, but what if I wanted to manipulate it a little bit? Maybe I want to pick out a subset of this and make it make this my new universe of assets. In that case, what I'll do is I'll right click on it and put it in a new container right here. And you're seeing that every time I click around in these point and click tools, MATLAB spits out a corresponding piece of code for me. So there's a direct link between the Pointing, pointing and clicking, and the code that's being used to perform those operations under the hood. Not only does this give you that transparency, but these pieces of code, they can also help you automate. And just to take a step back and expand on that a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe out everything that we have up till now. So I'm just going to clear our workspace. And now let's open up that import tool that we brought our data in from. Right, so here you remember that we just clicked on this import selection button, but another option available to us that would have helped us with automation was this ability to generate script. So what do I mean by automation? Let me tell you what I mean by that. What if tomorrow we had new data coming in, or even the same data, and I wanted to do some more analysis in MATLAB? Do I have to come back to this import tool and then click on import selection every time? Right? That's, that seems like a repetition or a duplication of work. Right? So instead, what you can do is we can come back to this import tool, and instead of saying import selection, we can ask MATLAB to generate code for us. So you see this is auto-generated code by MATLAB, and it has its own commands. It has its own co comments, so we can use that, and it's very readable. So sometimes I even use this as a learning tool. Right? So I just take a look at it and see how MATLAB does this importing under the hood. More importantly, what this code generation does is it takes what we do in a point and click tools the first time and then generates code for it so then we don't have to repeat it when we have new data or we want to perform the same repetitive actions. In this case, let's say I don't even want to look at it. I can just save it right here. I'll call it import data. And now if I close this out, the next time I come into MATLAB, all I need to do is use the script import data that I created. So I don't need to click around anymore. If I run this, you'll see my data 
index data is back in my workspace. To go back to the same stage that I was in before, where I picked out a subset of my universe, I can use the up arrow key, which is going to take me back to what's called the command history, which basically has captured all the commands we entered before. So we can easily go back to it by using this command right here. Let's actually reuse it and call it prices this time. It's a little more intuitive in call, than calling our universe of assets index data one, right? And since in portfolio optimization, we mostly work with returns data, we need to find a quick way to convert these prices into returns. One place to find a function like this is the function browser. It's a quick search tool. So I can quickly open it up and look for whatever I need. In this case, I'm going to search for return series. And you see it'll throw up a list of relevant functions. In this case, tick to red seems like it would work based on the description. So I'm just going to pull it out and use prices as the input right here. So I have prices as my input. And I'm going to put the results, which is going to be the returns data, into an output container called returns. Just opening up this returns container, I see that these numbers look like they do represent daily returns. So I'm happy with how this looks. And usually in portfolio optimization, we also need to have a proxy for return and risk. So we'll go ahead and calculate the mean of the returns. And this can be calculated with a single command. So I have mean of my returns. You'll notice here that I didn't have to specify the size of the input data. No for loops as well. So in the future, if your data changes or if you have more data, you don't have to worry about changing anything in this command here. The same exact command is going to work on new data. So let's just close up this for now. So now if you want to generate the proxy for risk in our portfolio, let's start off by generating the covariance matrix, right? So that's as easy as using one single command called cove, and it's going to scale and work for any size of data, right? So we have a proxy for both risk and return now in the form of means and covariances. So we can start thinking about the broader task in front of us. In order to do, say, a mean variance portfolio optimization, where would I get started? Initially, I thought that I would have to look up low-level function references and just trawl through the web trying to figure out how to put them together. But this is where the MATLAB documentation comes in. So I'm just going to quickly jump into the documentation here and show you how it helps you save time. So if you go straight into the financial toolbox, you see that it's divided based on a bunch of tasks that you want to do if you're just working with some time series and you want to do some processing. Uh, if you want to just chart out some technical indicators, you have that as well. You have some libraries to do some credit risk analysis. And then what we're doing here, which is portfolio optimization, contains, of course, a number of different topics under it. For example, mean variance. And of course, there are other ways of doing it as well. Uh, conditional value at risk portfolio optimization. In mean variance, again, you see that it's divided into a number of different subtasks. For example, you want to create a portfolio, you want to specify constraints, right? Or do you want to just you want to generate an efficient frontier? In this case, let's just jump to this particular subtask and you'll you'll see here, at least in my mind, this kind of encapsulate how the documentation is laid out. You have a bunch of function references here that you could use to do what you need. Or you could jump straight into this example section, which is a workflow-driven documentation, which basically takes you through the process of setting up portfolio and generating an efficient frontier. And me personally, I learned better through examples than through uh, these function references and syntax pages, right? So I'll jump into the example right here. And you see they have means and covariances as well. And they're going about the process of setting up a portfolio, right? So one nice thing about this documentation is that it's seamlessly integrated with the MATLAB desktop. So if I were to highlight a piece of code that I wanted to run, right click and said evaluate selection. And when I go back into MATLAB, you'll see that that particular code has been evaluated right here. I'm just going to clean things up a little bit, just make the command window easier to read. And let's rerun that particular command. What we've done with this command is we've created an empty portfolio. You'll see we haven't entered any other information into it. 
just opening it up. So you see we have a number of things that we can set, like bound constraints, budget constraints, inequality constraints, and so on. But most importantly, you have these two fields that are empty, which is the asset means and covariances. So we know we've already generated the asset means and covariances. We have it available to us. We just need to find a way of inputting it into this portfolio. To do that, I'm going to go straight back into the documentation. And you'll notice that the second command right here does just that. It tells you how to input your means and covariances into the portfolio. I'm just going to copy this out because there's one small change I need to make before running this because we've named our variables differently. In this case, we've named our covariance using a lowercase c, unlike them, right? So once I've made this change, I'm just going to run this and you'll see as soon as I do that, my means and covariances have been populated right here. It's also automatically detected the number of assets in the universe as well. If I don't want to sit here and set up a basic portfolio optimization problem by setting some of these constraints, MATLAB already gives me a function called set default constraints that does that for me. So I can just say set default constraints on my portfolio. And what I'm basically saying with this is that I'm not going to short anything. All my capital is invested in risky assets, leaving nothing aside for cash or riskless assets. Now I can continue and do things like set initial portfolios or turnover constraints, but for now, I'm just gonna run a quick function that'll plot the frontier. And for that, we have a function that's intuitively named called plot frontier, right? Of course, you can always jump into the documentation and take a look at it or find this function, but in this case, I've already used this before, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. So you see in about two or three lines of code, I've gone from my raw data, my raw price data, to this efficient frontier right here, which contains a number of optimal portfolios. Now you're thinking this is all nice out of the box, but what about my specific use case? Maybe I need to be able to take a look at the portfolios that lie on, the fish, on this efficient frontier. And as a portfolio manager, maybe I want some more information, something on the lines of a sharp ratio profile alongside this to help me make a decision on what portfolio to pick on this frontier. So the question now becomes, how customizable is my analysis in MATLAB? So we saw some level of customization before where these interactive interfaces gave us small pieces of code that we could change ourselves um, and basically modify it to our need. But let me give you another view into customization. Right now, what I'm going to do is recreate this particular efficient frontier with the risks and returns from the portfolios that lie on that frontier. Right, So I'm going to choose the risk and the returns, go up to the plots tab, and just chart it out. So now we've recreated that efficient frontier, but it's not as aesthetic looking. Right. Uh, so how do we go about maybe adding some of those labels, making it look pretty, adding markers to these uh, to this particular chart to show the portfolios that lie on it, and maybe even adding an, adding a sharp ratio to it. So in order to make customizations interactively to these charts, you have a tool called the plot tools. Right. So this lets you quickly go in, make changes to these plots, so that you don't have to spend uh, a lot of time digging into code and modifying these charts that way. So instead, what you can do is, for example, if you want to visualize the portfolios that lie on this frontier, you can just add a marker. Maybe I'll add a circular marker, change up the color, and you'll see in a couple of clicks, I now have a clear visualization of these portfolios. Of course, you can add data to these charts as well. Um, you can add another uh, profile or chart alongside this. And to that particular chart, you can add some data. For example, here, I can have risk on my x-axis and the sharp ratio, which is the return per unit risk on my y-axis. And you'll see your sharp ratio plotted alongside this as well. All right? So, of course, I'm going to add a marker real quick. Give this a different color. If you want to take a look at some grids on this, basically you can make it look very pretty. So let's let's add maybe these labels to the charts and returns. 
So once you're done making all these customizations, say you're happy with this particular chart, let's just do one last thing. Let's give these charts some titles. So the first chart is just going to be my efficient frontier. And my second chart's title is going to be maybe sharp ratio. Right, so you've modified this, made it look prettier. At the same time, you've added a lot more information to this chart. So somebody, if you're just sharing this with somebody, they now have more insight into your analysis that way. And now you can close this out, and now you're wondering if, you know what, what if I have new data? What if I have new returns or price data? I want to generate the same analysis, efficient frontier or sharp ratio. And if you remember before, in the import tool, we were able to generate code to help us automate the process of importing. And on similar lines, almost all of our interfaces have that ability to generate code. So this particular, um, the charts themselves have the ability to generate code once you've made these customizations. So everything that you've done in this chart is all captured you'll see that as soon as you do that, MATLAB generates a particular function for you. That's a well-commented function, so if you want to learn, you can always go ahead and take a look at what MATLAB's doing under the hood. Or, let me just actually clear this up, or you could just save this as is. So let's just leave it as create figure. And without having to spend too much time digging into it, I can just make sure that it basically regenerates my analysis. So I can, actually, let's, make sure that I close this chart first, just to show you that I'm not going to be cheating. I can now recreate the chart using the auto-generated function. So I'll call create figure with the standard inputs, and the second input being my sharp ratio, of course, which is my return per unit risk. So I have this chart recreated for me. So with this, I've shown you how to automate the smaller parts of our analysis, like customizing plots or importing data. However, there's another level of automation where it would be great if we could take our entire analysis right from importing data to generating optimal portfolios and efficient frontiers and then boil it down to the click of a button. This can be done by aggregating all our commands into this one file called a script in MATLAB. It's sort of like a macro in Excel. If I go back to the command history here, I can look at all the previous commands that I've entered. So I'm going to pick out the commands that interest me or the ones that I want to keep right here. And once I'm done, I can right click and say create a script for me. So you'll see the editor window now pops up with all the chosen commands. One of the first things I do when I create a script is to use these percentage signs to start commenting it. So if I come back later and maybe even go over it with somebody, the comments can act as a quick refresher. So I'll call it my portfolio analysis. And here I'm importing data. Preparing my data. And then creating a portfolio. Generating some charts. However, if I wanted to run maybe one of these sections independent of another section, it's always useful to split this code up into sections, right? So right here, I can use the double percentage sign to start doing that. And one really useful side effect of that is that you can start prototyping even more easily. For example, if I wanted to just create a portfolio with some data that I already had in my workspace, I don't want to run my entire script and re-import data. Instead, I just want to run this section. So I'll, up here, I have this button called Run Section, so I can go ahead and do that once I split my code into sections. But for now, it looks like I've commented it well enough. I can go ahead and save this. I'll call it My Script. So with this, we've achieved a level of automation that lets us rerun our entire analysis with a click of a button right here. That's one way to do it, but we're usually not done here. We always run into situations where we need to share our work with our managers, colleagues, or even regulators. And reports are a very common way of doing this. Of course, not everybody's fond of spending a lot of time creating reports because you might have to copy and paste figures into a Word document, add your own comments and descriptions, and so on. So to save time here, MATLAB's taken this process of generating reports 
and boiled it down to the click of a button. So if you go into the Publish tab, you have an option to just publish straight from the script. So if I just run this or click on this, this is going to take your code, the results, and the chats and put together a nice report for you. So it becomes a great tool for knowledge transfer. So you see it's split up into sections just like the way I split it up in my script. So I can always jump to a particular section, point out at my point out my results or the code that I use to generate the results as well. And of course, the chats as well. I also tend to use it as a documenting tool. So if I have different versions of my code or new data, and because of which I have some new chats, it's nice to have these different versions documented. And what you see here is an HTML report. But the publishing options also allow you to go back and generate reports in other formats like PDFs or PPT straight from the script. So you see a common theme in everything we've gone through, right? Less time spent on importing and reporting and sharing. So as a financial analyst, you get to spend more time on adding the secret sauce to the analysis yourself. Even with the analysis part, you could quickly prototype and try different things out. And this whole package is what analysts love about MATLAB. So going back to this workflow slide, let's start relating it to what we followed during our example. First, we had our data come in from an Excel spreadsheet. We used an interface to bring our data in, and then we used some of the plotting libraries and the low-cost plotting tools to gain some insight into our data. After that, we used some of the portfolio optimization libraries where we did some mean variance portfolio optimization. And in the last step here, we were able to generate a static report with the click of a button. One thing you'll notice here is that we've only traversed a narrow path in this workflow. There are so many other options available. What we'll do over the next couple of slides is just extend these concepts. Right? Let's see what other options are available, whether that's in accessing data or the libraries that are available to do financial modeling, and even or the last step, which is to share what you've done in terms of either a report or applications. MATLAB gives you the ability to bring your data in irrespective of where it comes from. We saw an example of importing data from Excel, but it's just as easy to bring in data from a database, data feeds like Bloomberg or FactSet, or even web services. And the ease of doing this comes from interfaces that help you import data really quickly and then do your work for you by generating code to automate this process. In terms of the analysis, you can leverage a lot of the functions that are built in so that you don't have to go about reinventing the wheel. You see some of the statistical functionality like regressions, probability distributions, and code optimization libraries. And now with more and more teams in the industry buying into data science and predictive modeling, the built-in machine learning libraries are being used way more frequently, especially because MATLAB has some nice interactive functionality built around it that make it very easy to use. On top of this core statistics functionality, you have specific financial modeling libraries like the portfolio optimization one that we used. You also have other libraries for things like pricing, Monte Carlo simulations, risk, and time series modeling like Gaich and Arima. And even though a lot of this functionality is already built in, one of the unique things about functions in MATLAB is that most of them can be opened up and the source code can be looked at. So nothing is ever black box. Up until now in this webinar, we've seen MATLAB as this data analysis tool. But fundamentally, MATLAB is a full-blown programming language with a rich IDE. So it lets you develop complete applications from the scratch if you need to. It's also a complete solution where you can test these applications and then distribute them, whether you want to do that as a standalone application or deploy them to another environment. The IDE itself is very complete and state-of-the-art with the debugger and features like comparison reports and dependency analysis. And for functionality that's mission critical, where the performance of the code can be really important, MATLAB provides performance analysis tools like Profiler to help you identify bottlenecks easily and remove them. You also have interactive tools to build graphical user interfaces on top of the functionality that you build in MATLAB. So you can build out your functionality like we did with the portfolio optimization, and then use what's called the guide interface in MATLAB to drag in drop-down menus, sliders, and so on, and create a front-end user interface very quickly and easily. 
Now let's take a look at examples of some other financial applications we can use MATLAB for. In this case, I'm just going to show you fully baked examples since this is a time constrained webinar. Here you see some of the other application areas for MATLAB and finance. It, it goes from insurance, investment, risk and trading amongst others. So if you're interested in taking a look at the breadth of application areas and just how MATLAB is being used in them, I would visit that landing page for MATLAB and finance. So you can use the hyperlink at the bottom of the slide to get there. Some of the user stories you'll see on there are really interesting. I'm going to pick a couple of these examples that you see here and get to them now in the interest of time. Let's start off with an example of using MATLAB to create and backtest a trading strategy. I'm just going to walk through the script here that's already been prepared. This goes through the process of coming up with a simple trading strategy based on some technical indicators and then it back tests it and tweaks the strategy till it's optimal. I'm just going to walk through the script here and first we'll bring in historical closing price data for one security. Then we'll use some of MATLAB's built-in technical analysis functions to bring up a chart that has two indicators charted on it, the moving average and the RSI. Using the interactive na nature of this chart, what I can do is I can dive into one of these sections right here and start analyzing it. For example, here, you notice that the moving average is going below, or should I say the closing price moves above the moving average. So you see that right here. And the RSI is trending in an upward direction and crossing a threshold of, say, 50. Maybe in this case, I should go long. Similarly, vice versa here, where my closing price is moving below the moving average and the RSI is trending downwards, maybe I should go short in this case. Right. Again, very simple strategy, but that'll do for the sake of this example. Now I want to jump, instead of going back into the script, I want to go into the published form of this uh, published form of this script. To make things easy, just going to go through this uh, report right here. I have the trading rules implemented in a couple of lines of code inside of this function right here. That's really where MATLAB distinguishes itself in that it lets you add your customized secret sauce to the strategy and makes it easy to do that. I've seen a lot of cases where experienced trading minds have particular very subjective strategies in mind based on their experience trading. Right? And they've used MATLAB to put this into code and automate the whole trading process. The next section right here runs a backtest where it looks for an optimal set of parameters of the technical indicators to maximize the sharp ratio or the profit. So we're able to take a look at the results of this backtest in this unique chart right here. Again, this can be generated with the click of a button in MATLAB where you have the sharp ratio charted out for different combinations of the parameters, the window or the size of window for each of those technical indicators, right? So you have the moving average parameter and the RSI parameter and the sharp ratio for it. It's also picked out a combination that maximizes the sharp ratio right here. All of this is great, but when we talk to traders, they value the ability to actually add customized trading strategies and the ability to even connect to a broker and send out orders. And our trading toolbox does just that. So it lets you come up with a strategy and implement it so that you automate the process of sending out orders using the trading toolbox. The second thing they value is the ease of use in itself, right? So they would love a what if analysis tool that wraps around this functionality and that's very easy to do with MATLAB. I have here a very simple user interface that's created in MATLAB that does just that. We get to add our technical indicators, maybe add Bollinger Bands, pick out a strategy here. You can have your customized strategy as well and you'll see the positions that uh, that would have been taken based on this strategy, right? So this is sort of a back testing. So MATLAB can be a complete solution whether you want to automate trading or build out a front end for the trader. For the second example, we'll take a look at a credit risk application. In this case, instead of spending too much time in MATLAB, let's just jump straight into the Excel front end that we have that wraps around this MATLAB functionality that we've built. This is a case where the MATLAB functionality has been deployed onto Excel. What we have here is a portfolio of bonds. They have different coupon rates, maturity dates, and so on. 
Say our manager comes in and asks us to find the value at risk for this portfolio due to credit events. So we need to take into account the possibility of default, downgrades, and even upgrades. Right? We also have some historical ratings for these bonds to train a predictive model. So in this case, we'll use some historical ratings and use some machine learning models in MATLAB to predict the ratings for these bonds given these new z-scores right here. This functionality has now been ported into Excel as an Excel add-in, and it's hidden behind this button right here. So all we need to do is click on this, and you'll see the ratings have been populated right now. And since different ratings have their own yield curves, we would want to find the probability of transition from one credit rating to another and then incorporate that into our analysis. So that's what we'll need here is the transition matrix. And MATLAB has a built-in function to generate this transition probability matrix already. So what we'll do is we'll just click on this button, which is going to invoke that MATLAB function and give us the numbers right here. So you see this looks as expected, right? So there's a 93% probability of a AAA bond staying at AAA. There's a small chance, about 5% of it being downgraded to a AA, and then a smaller chance at, of it going to A and so on, right? So this takes into account some historical migration data and comes up with this automatically. Now coming to this final interface that we have here, I can run a Monte Carlo simulation here to compute the loss distribution. You'll notice we're running around 10,000 simulations, and we're doing that for our entire portfolio of bonds. So that contains about 1,300 bonds. So overall, we're running about 13 million valuations. However, since this is MATLAB functionality under the hood, the speed of MATLAB saves the day here. So this should just run in a few seconds. And you'll see that right here, you'll have our loss distribution being populated. And from there, we'll be able to generate something like a value at risk, right? So this should take about just a few seconds. So you see now we have the simulated loss distribution. And up here, you'll see that we have the 90, 95, 99% value at risk as well, computed from that distribution. The key takeaway here, though, is that MATLAB functionality can be deployed in other tools as a front end, and pretty easily at that, while still retaining the speed and kind of letting you develop the application itself in MATLAB. If you want to dive into the two examples I showed you in more detail, of course, you can always take a look at the hyperlink that you see here in the slide, and you'll find webinars dedicated to trading and credit risk, amongst many others, right on there. In the credit risk application that we just saw, we saw an example of taking MATLAB functionality and deploying it into Excel. Now, let's look at that process in a little more detail. How can you share the applications that you build in MATLAB with people who don't even have MATLAB and without having to recode it at that? Using the compiler, what you can do is applications can be taken and shared or deployed as either standalone applications or Excel add-ins, like the credit risk example that we just saw. You have another option where the compiler SDK which is another product, lets you take your applications and integrate them with applications written in other languages. So they can be web or enterprise applications that you integrate your MATLAB applications with. An example of this was the asset allocation tool that we saw at the start of this webinar. Now, if you want a more secure and scalable enterprise analytics setup, then the MATLAB production server can be handy. We have separate videos on our website focusing on the production server if you're interested in learning more about it. The biggest feature of these deployed applications is that they can be shared with an unlimited number of people or groups completely royalty-free. You also don't need to be an IT expert to generate these deployed applications. I'm going to show you an example of that right now. Here I have a function that pretty much does exactly what we did in the first portfolio optimization example that we went through. Picks out returns from prices, generates asset moments, creates a portfolio, and generates an efficient frontier. We've just added one extra line here that'll help us give an input of a minimum return, right? So as a portfolio manager, I can say I want a minimum of 7% return, and this function is gonna pick out an optimal portfolio from that frontier given that input. 
So let's test this out in MATLAB first with some test data. So let's go back down here. Let's see what the inputs are. I'm just going to copy out this thing right here. My inputs are going to be my prices. Let's say we want a minimum return of about 6%. And again, we have to specify this as daily return, so I'm going to divide it by 252. And if I run this, you'll see it gives me my efficient frontier and my sharp ratio. It's a very familiar looking plot. It also picks out an optimal portfolio right here based on my minimum level of return. So maybe I built this in MATLAB and now I don't want my colleagues who use Excel to duplicate my work. I want them to be able to use what I built as an ad hoc tool for analysis. In that case, I can go up to the Apps tab right here, which if you remember, contains some apps that basically simplify the process of doing different things, right? In this case, we're gonna find an app to help us deploy this functionality real easy. What I'll pick on is this library compiler. So I'm going to drag it over from my other monitor right here. This library compiler lets me deploy it in many forms. I could deploy it as a shared library in C or C++, generate a Java package, a Python package, or even an Excel add-in, which is what we'll do in this case. And then once I do that, I can add the functionality that I want to deploy. In this case, I just want to add this compute opt port. But as soon as you do that, if you actually scroll down, you'll notice that this app has automatically figured out the dependencies, right? So the compute output probably depends on these two functions to run. So it's going to package that as well. And all you need to do is just click on package. It's as simple as that. So while this is happening, I'm going to go back to the slides for a second and explain that process to you. So in my case, I have the functionality built out in MATLAB. So I've created the MATLAB application or the functionality. I run it through my compiler, which is what I just did using the library compiler. This compiler is going to spit out what's called an Excel add-in, right? The Excel add-in, in your case, you'll give it to your colleagues, right? There's no limit on how many colleagues you can distribute it to. So I'll give it to my colleague who's just going to need the MATLAB compiler runtime on his or her machine, right? So this is freely available, available on the MATLAB website. So basically, it's a stripped down version of the MATLAB engine, which Excel is going to use to run the functionality that we put in Excel. And notice that we went through this process with a couple of point and clicks. So now if I go back into the application compiler, you'll see that this has already been packaged. I can open it up in the output folder right here. So I see that I have some I have an Excel add-in right here that's been generated for me. So now what I can do is I can go into Excel and maybe I have a simple interface set up like this, right? So I have a portfolio weight section where I want to generate the asset allocation and I have a minimum return that I can specify as a portfolio manager. But how do I first add that Excel add-in into Excel, right? So I'll go into the developer tab Go into add-ins, and I can browse for that particular add-in, right? In this case, I've already added it, called Compute Opt Port. So I'm going to let this go, come back into Excel. And now if I look for this particular function, you'll see that it pops up as if it were native Excel functionality, right? So the Excel user is going to find no difference. All they'll realize is that they have new functionality on their machine, which lets them pick out an optimal portfolio, right? Here, just to show you how this works, I'm going to pick out some data. Here are my prices. I'll pick out an optimal returns value divided by 252. And now if I run this, you'll see it gives me my asset allocation. It's also generated this particular figure. Again, it's a very similar figure with my efficient frontier sharp ratio and the optimal portfolio picked out. And you'll notice here that it's it's very easy to do ad hoc analysis. So maybe I can just change this. Maybe I want to check 8%. You'll see my asset allocations have changed, and it's also sped up this new chart. And this chart is completely in Excel. The Excel users of this functionality don't need to have a license of MATLAB at all. All they need is the freely available MATLAB compiler runtime from our website. And with that, we're almost at the end of the webinar. 
I'm just going to quickly summarize using the challenges that we talked about earlier. With respect to the ability to customize, you saw how MATLAB let you build up anything from scratch since it's a complete development environment. At the same time, you have access to built-in functions to help you with this as well. Which brings me to my next point, which is that even though you have a lot of functionality already built in, you can always open them up, take a look at the source code. So nothing is ever black box. Even in the case of using point and click tools, since MATLAB lets you generate code from them. With respect to performance, you saw a hint of what MATLAB is capable of, and it was able to run about 13 million valuations in just a few seconds in that credit risk example that I showed you. We also saw an example of the speed in the trading example when we tried back testing the trading strategy to optimize our parameters. And with respect to development time, you saw how we were able to do some quick prototyping. We were able to build out a decently sized full-fledged portfolio optimization application in about 20 minutes. So we spent our time being financial analysts instead of software programmers. And finally, you saw how interfaces make it easy to bring data into MATLAB from different sources. And finally, how MATLAB easily integrates with other applications in the deployment example. All it took was a couple of point and clicks. Again, MATLAB is widely used primarily because it's able to address these challenges at the tool level. Again, the user stories on our website are a testament to that. Feel free to reach out to us if you're interested in learning anything more about MATLAB. And again, thank you for joining us on this webinar.